Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi guys, it's Silas from Kit Guru, and today we'll be taking a look at the Corsair Hydro Series H100i RGB Platinum 240mm liquid CPU cooler. So for as long as I can remember, Corsair have been a staple in the AIO liquid cooling market, working to produce a range of flexible options. For me, Corsair were a go-to when deciding upon my first sealed AIO liquid cooler with the H55, uh, back in the time where some CPUs were even packaged with liquid coolers. AMD, I'm looking at you. But a lot has changed with the move not only to large AIO liquid coolers, 280 and 360 millimeters, but also with the consideration for aesthetics. Lots of manufacturers are packing LEDs and RGB functionality into their coolers and Corsair uh, being no exception. But the new Hydro Series H100i adds to their product name Platinum, which as with power supplies suggests an air of supremacy. So let's take a look at whether it's worth this pretty strong statement, along with its £124.99 asking price. So in the box we have the cooler itself, along with a ton of mounting hardware for most current Intel and AMD mounts. You do also get a couple of RGB ML series 120mm fans and a few pieces of documentation. Warranty and instruction manuals are included. Uh, and in order to get the cooler up and running with software, a micro USB to internal USB connection cable is also included. For those who have used a Corsair cooler in the past, the inclusion of this will be pretty self-explanatory. Overall, looking at the H100i Platinum, it's a pretty comprehensive package. With a lot of RGB coolers I have tested recently, I did find uh, that they came with like a number of cables and, and controllers, so connecting everything up uh, really required running through the instruction manual um, and could sometimes be a little bit excessive or overly complicated. However, the H100i Platinum is pretty self-contained. On each fan, you do have not only a 4-pin PWM connection cable, uh, but also Corsair's proprietary RGB LED connection. Uh, both of these cables do run directly to the CPU cooler's pump. The pump features connections for all the fan cables, both the 4-pin PWM connections and RGB connections, as well as a SATA power connection and a 3-pin fan cable. On the block there is a small connection point for attaching the micro USB to internal USB header cable, uh, but that's basically it. It's actually really nice to see a cooler which is so simple to cable manage and to get up and running. There will of course be a bit more work involved during installation, but from the outset, considering the pretty specific proprietary connections, uh, it's relatively easy to make a guess at where everything has to connect and where everything goes. You do always have the instructions to fall back on if you run into any trouble. Checking out the cooler, the block and the radiator feel really, really solid, uh, very premium, and the tubing is also braided. Uh, the tubing is also roughly about 35 centimeters long, which should allow easy installation either at the front or at the top of your case. It's worth noting that thermal paste is pre-applied, however this was removed and substituted during our testing. The block features a very similar design to some previously released coolers from Corsair, like the H100X, uh, but with some obvious uh, additions such as the channels for added lighting. Uh, the radiator as well is a little bit more squared off with a reflective Corsair logo uh, running on each side. Overall pretty impressive, everything feels very premium and well built, and the fact that everything is so self-contained with the exception of uh, like the extra USB internal header cable and the SATA power connection, uh, everything looks pretty simple in terms of installing and getting everything set up. So let's take a quick look at how everything quickly comes together. As we test on the Z170 platform and the LGA1151 socket, installation is an absolute breeze. Firstly, if you are installing a cooler for the very first time, it's great to see that the instructions include super large, easy to follow images and clearly marked stages. For our socket, the required backplate is basically pre-set up with the slidable mother motherboard pass-throughs, uh, so you simply just need to adjust them to fit. An adhesive pad is also there to hold the backplate in place when flipping the motherboard over, uh, which I must admit can sometimes be a little bit tricky. With the backplate installed, there are four double-threaded standoffs which need to be screwed into the backplate, uh, and then you're basically set to mount the CPU block. Thermal compound can be added, not necessary if you're sticking with the pre-applied stuff, and the block can then be placed over your CPU and mounted using the four large thumb screws. It is worth noting that some of the larger mounting parts are separately packaged and bagged, uh, but pretty much all of the screws for both the radiator fans and even the CPU block are all bagged together. 
Not a huge issue considering how straightforward the mounting process is and how much it's been simplified, but it would be nice to see maybe just at least some separate packs for at least AMD and Intel mounts to avoid any potential confusion. Mounting the radiator is also pretty simple. Uh, you do just have to dig around in the large bag of screws for the required parts. A selection of both long and short radiator mounting screws are included, uh, depending on your preference of push or pull configurations. But one thing to note is, although you do get just eight short radiator screws, uh, 16 longer fan to radiator screws are also included. This is pretty cool, allowing a bit more flexibility if your intention is to run a four fan push-pull configuration. And considering it's only an additional eight screws included, a bit of a plus point for the H100i Platinum. To me, it's always great to see manufacturers including parts to allow for future upgrades. If unlike me, you're planning on installing the H100i Platinum on a socket other than the LGA 1151 socket, uh, there is a bit more work required, but the instructions being nice and clear make swapping the mounting hardware a breeze. For 2011, it's simply a case of skipping the backplate and using a separate set of standoffs that screw directly into the socket. And for AMD mounts, uh, you will need to utilize the standard motherboard mounts and swap a couple of clips that attach to the CPU block. The block mounts slide off and can be swapped for their AMD equivalent. And when in place, you simply use two retention clips and two of the four large thumb screws. To be honest, I've worked a lot with Corsair coolers and mounting has always been top notch. So unsurprisingly, the installation process only took around five minutes, probably a minute or so longer if screwing the radiator into place. Connecting all the cables is also super easy and takes seconds. Both the 4-pin PWM cables from the fans connect directly to the CPU block, as do the RGB fan connections. You do also need to plug in the 3-pin fan connection to your motherboard, uh, the SATA power connection to your PSU, and then the included micro USB cable to an internal USB 2.0 motherboard header. It's possible a first time builder may have a little bit of trouble, but personally I think it's pretty unlikely. As with most PC connections, everything being keys means everything kind of connects and goes together like Lego. Every cable is also long enough to reach its required destination, and this does help hugely with cable management. Even the included micro USB to internal USB 2.0 header cable is long enough to pass behind your motherboard tray. One small point I would note, which is not really a criticism of Corsair, but something to consider moving forward. A lot of modern motherboards are slowly starting to remove the USB 2 internal header, or simply reducing the available number to say one. As the CPU block connects using a standard micro USB connection, uh, a micro USB to standard USB cable being included would really complete the options for compatibility, allowing you to run the USB cable out of the rear of your system and then into the back of your motherboard. This again is not really a criticism of Corsair or the H100i RGB Platinum kit, uh, just something I've noticed with recent system builds. Corsair will likely make the move over to including this as and when it's absolutely required, uh, but to beat everybody to the punch would be another feather in Corsair's cap. With everything installed and all the cables plugged in, it's time to move over to our testing. Now at KitGuru we have recently updated our testing setup and now test temperatures on the more recent Z170 platform. For our CPU, we are testing with the Intel Core i7-7700K installed in an Asus Z170 Pro Gaming motherboard. For RAM, we have a single 8GB stick of Guile Evo X RGB for some added bling, uh, running at 3200MHz, and storage is handled by a 120GB SanDisk SSD+. Powering our bench is a Seasonic Prime Platinum 650W PSU. When testing, we take a number of readings with both the i7-7700K's turbo locked and overclocked as well to 4.5GHz. The temperatures taken are all delta T values, meaning we subtract the ambient temperature from the CPU temperature. More details of our full testing methodology can be found on kitguru.net. Now, the results. Super, super surprising. The H100i Platinum absolutely dominated our tests. With 4 GHz locked in, it's the coolest cooler tested, even compared to, say, the 280mm Cryorig A80, and generally the lowest temps across the board. I ran our tests a number of times just because they were quite staggering, and even after almost six passes, the same results came back, basically exactly the same with maybe a degree or so of difference. Moving on to our 4.5 GHz overclock, the same results follow. Even when overclocking our Intel 7700K, we still see super low temps, just above 50 degrees at full load. Our idle temps are a little bit higher at both 4 GHz and 4.5 GHz, but it's really hard to excuse these low temps. Realistically speaking, there will probably always be something running in the background, some kind of background process or application, so it's likely temps will always be a little ramped up over our idle, which makes the load temps even more relevant. Unfortunately though, there is a sacrifice to be made, which has been shown in some cases with other coolers, and this one in particular, 
Uh, temperatures may be great, but at the sacrifice of lower audible noise. The H100i, although great with temperature, is a little bit louder than previously tested coolers at 44.9 dBA. This is unfortunately normally the trade-off with higher fan speeds, um, normally with higher fan speeds comes higher noise, but the H100i Platinum does come with some pretty beefy fans as standard. The included fans are Corsair ML Pros, which have some pretty impressive airflow, but a much higher RPM at 2400 RPM. This is a lot higher than most of the coolers that we've tested recently. Uh, the Ryzen Tech Orcus topped out at 1800 RPM for instance, uh, but it's still really impressive to see these great temps without hitting too high a noise barrier. In my testing, I will admit that even at idle, the H100i was barely audible and actually had me running over to our test bench on a couple of occasions just to make sure it was even still on. So, super easy installation, more so in our case for the LGA1151 socket, uh, but all the included 4-pin RGB LED connections do suggest some cool lighting effects, so let's check them out. Now, the included ML Pro fans do basically what you'd expect. There are a bunch of effects accessible through Corsair's software, uh, almost too many to list, like breathing, static, rainbow, and all of this can be synced with your existing Corsair peripherals. The fan lighting is great, and this does roll through to the CPU block. It's also cool to see lighting here, and don't get me wrong, the block is heavily decked out with light, but it is a little bit clustered. A lot of the block is hidden away by the black silver Corsair logo, which uh, covers a good portion of it. And although you have a couple of strips on the top and around the sides, which illuminate the block really well, I do feel the top could be a little bit more exposed by, say, reversing the colors with a black Corsair logo sitting on a white or mirrored background. Now, this is me being truly very, very picky, primarily as I've recently tested the Game of Storm Castle 240, which, in my opinion, uh, handled this a little bit better, although with a slightly taller block, the lighting was in addressed on the block really well. For lighting, though, you do have to delve into the Corsair IQ software, uh, which is honestly some of the best I've come across. There is a ton of very, very fine control, and it's actually really hard for me not to recommend something like the Lighting No Pro if you're looking to build a lot of LED lighting and RGB lighting into a new system to make full use, basically, of the variance of effects um, and control that you'll have access to. Cooling through software is also pretty solid. You can set up your own fan curves and profiles, uh, which are all easily switchable. And temperature monitoring is also there. Hard to say, though, how much you'll be monitoring this considering how well the H100i Platinum does perform. So to summarize, I initially approached the H100i purely from a cooling standpoint. At the end of the day, a cooler should cool. So my testing was based heavily on performance and how well it handled the temperature range we applied to our 7700K. It managed this with such a degree I thought something was wrong with our test bench. But further testing and retesting proved that the H100i uh, really is an exceptional cooler. Running back to installation, the instructions and the pre-preparedness of everything for the cooler, all the mounting hardware was great and it really sped the process up. There is, of course, a little bit more work if you're installing on the AMD platform, um, but this is realistically only about 30 seconds or so of work to get everything set up and then you're good to go. The lighting is great, the ML Pro fans look amazing, as does the CPU block, although maybe a little bit subdued on this front, and the software support is faultless. The Corsair IQ software is some of the best that I've seen for a cooler and for accessories, and really a great ecosystem to be a part of if you have or plan to add additional Corsair peripherals. Compared to some other AIO 240mm coolers, the £124.99 price point uh, may seem a little bit on the high end, uh, but you do get a whopping amount of value for your money. Through the quality of the cooler itself, the super simple installation and easy to follow instructions, and the added benefits of functional lighting, even past the point of standard effects to synchronisation across similarly branded peripherals. At the end of the day, I'm blown away, which rhymes, so it must be true. In seriousness, no, the H100i Platinum is genuinely impressive considering the great performance and massive lighting flexibility. If you want total control of your cooler, both for temperatures and for aesthetics, uh, it's definitely the way to go. Make sure to let us know what you think though, uh, leave us a like or a dislike, and drop your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit subscribe or click the bell icon below for notifications and updates of new video releases from KitGuru. I've been Silas from KitGuru and I will see you in the next one.